My name's Jeff Regan. I get ten a day and expenses from a detective bureau run by a guy named Lyon. Anthony J. Lyon. They call me the Lion's Eye. With Jack Webb as Jeff Regan investigator, stand by for hard-boiled action and mystery and thrilling adventure in tonight's story of The Man Who Came Back. Well, this is the way it started. It was a hot Tuesday afternoon, about four o'clock. Melody was sitting at her typewriter watching a tired-looking fly crawl across the ceiling. She didn't say a word, just waved an arm in the direction of his door. Certainly we will, Mr. Brandeck. Absolutely. Certainly. Yes, of course. Come in, Reed. Yes. Yes. It's all right, Mr. Brandeck. Yes, she'll be there in an hour. All right, half an hour. Goodbye. Regan, you're it. I'm what? Here's his address. Name's Elmer Brandeck. Has a real estate office in Aldina. She came by a special messenger half an hour ago. It was late, but the bank tells me it's good. So you're it. You know, that's what I like, efficient. It's too hot to be funny. I want you to hop out there and see what he's excited about. Didn't he tell you? Yeah, he's one of those nasty old coots. He didn't make much sense on the phone. Something about someone coming back. <laughs> Besides, his teeth were slipping around. Yeah. Uh... Anyhow, it's a job. Business has been terrible lately. You know, I still want my expenses on that Tartaglia thing. Have you ever come up short with me? Yes, I have. You get all that's coming to you. When? As soon as Melody gets a bill from that hospital, because that's coming out of your check. Now, beat it out there and find out what this guy wants and call me if you're running into any trouble. Brondike Manor was a brown-white cottage on the edge of ten acres of dusty land in back of Foothill Drive. There was a big sign right in front of it telling you how easy it is to own your own land and have your own home on Brondike Estates. Well, I parked across the highway, and it was just about then that a big, heavy set man wearing a dirty white Panama hat and a suit that didn't fit him around the stomach crawled out of a 36 Ford sedan, jammed a cigar in his mouth, and came over to my car. He had hair in his ears. Yeah, hot afternoon, ain't it? Yes, sir, sure is hot. Sure is a hot afternoon. Yeah, it is if you spend it sitting in a car pulling on a bottle. Smell it, huh? mile away. Just trying to beat the heat. Okay, you've been parked in a car beating the heat. Yeah, you win. I ain't much good at trying to look like a guy who wants to buy a house. Yeah. Who do you look like? Yeah, it's a little greasy, but it's me. Uh-huh. Marty Anderson, Confidential Investigation. Guess I ought to have new ones printed up, huh? All right, you're a sleuth. How's business, Marty? Bunk. Too bad. You going in to see old man Brondike? Your nose is getting sunburned, Marty. <laughs> I was just going to go and see him myself when I spot you pull up. Recognize you from pictures in the paper last week on that Tartaglia thing. I figured maybe you and me ought to talk. Yeah. Hey, you, you make it tough for a guy, Regan. We're, we're in the same racket. What you going to see him about? You said you were going in to see him. Well, I kind of changed my mind when I seen you. This is where I came in. Ah, you're a tough guy, Rick, and you're a real tough guy, and a lot of people know it. But Marty Anderson's betting you're a dumb guy, too, a real dumb guy. Mm-hmm. See you around, Marty. I'm an old conk, huh? A fat old slob who couldn't get a trick as a housekeeper or a tail in a punk, is that it? Oh, well, you don't get too close. That's a real bad label you got a hold of. Okay, Rick, and okay, you're young and tough, but you just keep my card, wise guy. You'll want to see me. You'll want to see me before it's all tied up. Mr. Brondike, please, Elmer Brondike, he's expecting me. Your name, please? Regan. Mr. Regan. R-E-G-A-N? No, 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 you don't have to write it down, lady. And your business? Private. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to know a little more than that, Mr. Regan. Is it always this hot in here? Yes, and I'm sick and tired. Uh, look, just flip your switch and tell him I'm here, will you? He sent for me. Wait a minute, please. Well, what is it, Connie? There's a Mr. Regan here, Dad. He says he's expected. I don't find him listed on your appointment book. Don't be an idiot. Send him in. Send him in. Let me go in now, Mr. Regan. Yeah, thanks. Is he always like that? Most of the time. Other times he's bad. High blood pressure? He's got it high, low, and in between. I hate him. A winner, huh? I'm sorry, Connie. That is your name, isn't it? Oh, on in before I quit. 
Don't just stand there. Come on in and shut the door. What took you so long? Now, you're Jeff Regan, huh? Now, you don't look much like a private detective to me. Sit down. Where'd I put that thing? Over there yeah. by the inkwell. What? Oh. Well. Now then, Regan. About this Collier. He's a no-good tramp. Do you understand that? A no-good tramp. I'll see that he goes right back up to San Quentin if I have to. I'm a dangerous man to play games with. He found that out once, and if he keeps up this business, he's going to find it out again. All right, you're dangerous. He's a no-good tramp, San Quentin. Hey, are you mocking me? No, I'm not. I'm just wondering what you're talking about. I just told you everything. You got ears? Can't you hear? I don't hear anything but a lot of blubbering, and that doesn't make any sense. Too, too big gum Look, Connie you told me all about your high blood pressure. You better watch that. Uh, she did, did she? Well, Connie talks too much. That's what's the matter with her. She talks too much. Oh, sure, and you'd fire her, only she's your daughter, and you'd have to pay somebody else three times what you pay her to take everything she has to take. You get out of here. Get out of my office. Get, get out. Get out. Okay. No. Never mind. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Just hot. He always gets me. Yeah, me too. Now, do you want to tell me about it? He's an ungrateful scoundrel. Who? Toby Collier! Who else? Well, I took that boy in as my junior partner in Brondike Estates when he was nothing more than a car washer in a filling station. And how does he repay me? Hey, he... hey, hey, you're letting the heat bother you again. No. no, it isn't the heat, Regan, I'll tell you that. It's those phone calls. Phone calls telling me to beware and watch out. A lot of other nonsense. Mm-hmm. Now we're getting close. They let him out of San Quentin last week. You'd think he'd go somewhere where people didn't know him and wash cars again or something. But no. He has to start telephoning my office and telling me he's back and that he's going to get me. What was he doing in San Quentin? Two to ten on an embezzlement count. How long ago was that? Three years ago. And I guess he got time off or something. Why is he sore at you? I had to testify against him. It was my firm. He was chiseling. So now he's out of the clink and he's phoning you and trying to throw a scare into you, huh? He may be out, but he isn't scaring me or anybody else, I'll tell you that. Yeah. I want you to find him, wherever he is. Bring him here. All right. And then I want to tell him like I'm telling you. If he keeps bothering me with those phone calls, if he persists in threatening me, then I'll haul out some stuff I have in my safety deposit box and send him back up there on a swindling rap just to get him out of my hair. You withheld evidence at that trial? I withheld nothing. Just be a new charge. and I could make it stick if I wanted to. All right, tell me the rest of it. What do you mean, tell you the rest of it? No more to tell. He's a punk. He's got to get in trouble. Where'd Marty Anderson figure? What? Anderson, Marty. Confidential investigations. Big, dirty-looking ape who shaves every other day. Oh, that rump. How do you know about him? He tried to shake me down outside your office. <laughs> he would. Yeah, he's just a second-rate gum heel I called in three years ago when I thought Collier might be fixing my books. I think it's the only job he ever had. He's been pestering me ever since. Did he testify against Collier? Of course he testified against Collier. That was part of his job. Is there anything else you want to know? Yes, there is. Why'd you call International instead of the police? You're pretty nosy, aren't you? I'm a lot of things. Now, come on, why? Because every time you call a cop around this town, there's always some snoopy reporter hanging around the sergeant's desk. I got a half a million dollars tied up in this here gravel pit. I don't want anybody who's going to buy into it thinking that I might get knocked over by some loony. That's why I want it all quiet. Does that satisfy you? No, oh, it'll do for now. You'll probably come up with something better later on. Are you done? All right, where's you... Collier? If I knew, I wouldn't have called you in. You have a family here, a home, a wife, something? He was all alone. He had a mother somewhere, I guess. Pictures? <laughs> here. Okay, I'll keep these. When am I going to hear from you? When I find something. You bring him to me. I'll ask him to come. He doesn't have to. <laughs> you just spring that swindling rap on him. He'll come. Yeah, and if it's no good, he can turn right around and slap a slander suit right in your face, and I wouldn't blame him. God, don't you forget you're working for me, no, young man. No, I won't. Regan, Regan, you, you've got a nasty way of talking. People don't talk to me like that. Yeah, well, this is a brand new crowd of people, Frosty Top, and we talk just like we feel. <laughs> Down at the city hall, they didn't have anything on Toby Collier, except that he'd been released from San Quentin August 10th. From there, I went to the parole board office, but it was closed by that time. So I did the next best thing, and I sent a wire to the officer in charge of parole prisoners, San Quentin, asking for Collier's address. Then I dropped into the Times office, and I looked up the story of the trial. 
It was a page three item for two days, a second section filler for a week. After that, nothing. There were no pictures. But it did give the name of Collier's lawyer, a man named Alan Nordale. The phone book gave him an address over on Kingsley. Now that you, Millie? Hold on just a minute. I was just trying to get my dinner over before you... Who are you? Mr. Nordale? Mm-hmm. Well, my name is Regan. I'm a private investigator. I'm oh. trying to locate a former client of yours, a man named Toby Collier. Well, come in, come in, come in. I was expecting Millie, but come in. Thank you. I always fix my own dinner, poached egg and half and half. I I have ulcers. <clears throat> Name's Regan? Yeah. Hey, you want an egg? No, thanks. Hey, you mind if I finish? No, no, go ahead. Hey, thank you. Mm. What's what with Toby Collier? Well, I'm just trying to locate him, that's all. Mm-hmm. I found out that you were his lawyer. He was released from San Quentin ten days ago. Yep, 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 yep. You sure you won't have an egg? Yeah, you get used to him after a while. Mm. Who do you work for, Regan? International Detective Bureau. The line's still there? Yeah. Well, so you're the line's eye, huh? Yeah. Yeah, line's is a bandit. But whose case? Elmer Brondike. Mm-hmm. And what you want Toby for? Ball him out for making threatening phone calls. Uh, that all? As far as I know. Eh, Toby was a nice kid, but a calendar job. Go on with one war going, one depression on deck, and a new war starting. Makes a difference. Now the calendar got him. And he wound up in San Quentin. Well, everything was against him at the trial, too. He was pretty mad at old man Brondike and that private dick, and me and everyone else before it was all over. I tried to talk to him. From what Brondike tells me, he's still mad. Yeah, I... I did all I could, but he didn't have a chance. He tried to lift a lousy couple thousand bucks, and they caught him. Well, he's out now. Do you handle his parole? No. You know who did? No. You don't know where he is in town? No. Well, Brondike said he had a mother. No. Okay. I'll leave you to Millie. Yeah. If we uh, we play records, Millie used to be a violinist. Sorry, I'm no help. Uh, Regan, if you find Toby, I'd like to see him. Why? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I just want to see what three years in the pen does to a man like that. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet you do. Where are you now? Did you find Collier? I'm calling from home. Home? What about Collier? I didn't find him yet. Well, get busy. What are you waiting for? A telegram, morning, couple of things. Listen, this old schmo is plenty tough, and if he thought you were local... Look, it's job... 9 o'clock at night. I'm tired. There's nothing I can do till tomorrow morning. He sort of a shave pup about all this, and especially about you. Phoned up and said you called him a lot of names. He is a lot of names. I don't care what he is. You don't talk to a client like that. Besides, I haven't cashed his check. Now, go on out and find that guy and get this thing settled. Good night, Regan. <laughs> Besides, I haven't cashed his check. Well, I just set down the phone and started at the door when it happened. Connie Brondike was standing there, and she didn't waste any time. She didn't say a word, just pulled the trigger. The first three brought down plaster on the seat. The fourth one ruined the shoulder on my suit, and the fifth gave me a haircut. I made a grab for it, and I missed. I took the empty gun in my face. Next thing I knew, she pulled off one of those high spiked heels and raised it above my head. I tried to stop her, but my arms wouldn't work, and that's all I remember. You are listening to the story of the man who came back. Tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, the investigator. They're still available for qualified nurses. Yes, the Army Nurse Corps Reserve still has commissions available. If you are a graduate registered nurse between the ages of 21 and 45, you may be eligible for a commission in the Army Nurse Corps section of the regular officer's reserve. Those who meet the high standards and qualify to serve with this fine organization may elect active or inactive status. Nurses requesting inactive status will continue with civilian nursing, but stand ready to serve in time of emergency. In addition, they have the opportunity to take advantage of special training courses. Nurses who request active status enjoy the same privilege of all other officers. Graduate work is provided at the Army's most modern teaching centers, and the nurses obtain educational experience that benefits them in both civilian and military nursing. If you believe you qualify for a commission in the Army Nurse Corps Reserve, apply to the Adjutant General, Washington, D.C. And now, back to the story of the man who came back and Jeff Regan, the investigator. Oh, yeah, Connie had done a real good job. Six to five, I'd never get there before it stopped ringing. Oh. 
All right, all right. Hello? Reagan, is that you? Yeah. What's the matter? Did I get you up? Something like that. This is Marty Anderson. Yeah. You wash your face yet? Still feeling tough, huh? I thought maybe we could talk now. Yeah. What made you think that? You're looking for Collier, ain't you? I know where he is. Yeah? Want to talk? Where? My place. On my card. Half an hour. I'll wait for you, tough guy. Uh, bring some money. This is going to cost you. Everything's going to cost me. Bring some money. <clears throat> Yeah, 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 I'm fine. I'm... I told you it was all right, honey, go. I was real worried. I, I thought I heard some shots, and I see this one jumping down the stairs like she had a good homicide somewhere. You sure you're all right? Go, go on, me. Take your hands off me. All right, me. Jake, let her go, let her go. She's a friend of mine. You sure it's all right. Hey, you're bleeding. Look at the plaster. Who them were shot? Of course they were shot. You let... Um, Jake, Jake, let her go, will no. you? Huh? Sure, see? sure. I was cleaning a gun. Oh, cleaning a gun. Funny time to clean the gun, 10 o'clock at night. Well, I do a lot of funny things. Come up and have a drink sometime, will you, Jake? Uh, okay, Mr. Egan, okay. Good night. Good night. Oh, no, you don't, lady. Stay right where you are. No, we're going to talk. You hurt my arm. I'll rough you up good if I have to. Now, come on. I only went in my picture. Oh, save it, lady. We didn't have any right to give them to you. They were mine. Should have done that. So you come over to get him and you take five shots at me and slam a gun in my face. Why don't you finish the job with your heel? I, I couldn't do it. I was going through your wallet looking for the pictures. I saw your license. You're a private detective. You're looking for Toby, aren't you? That's why you had the pictures. You're looking for Toby. Collier, your boyfriend? Yeah, we were going to get married. Only he went to the pen, huh? Those pictures. That's all I had left of him. He didn't write? No. You know, he's out now. Yeah. So he gotten in touch with you? Why should he? He thinks I was in on it. In on what? The whole dirty, rotten thing. Toby was framed. Dad hired that Marty Anderson to help him do it. How do you know he was framed? I've been working for my dad for five years. I see things. Yeah, I'll bet you do. That's the truth. Oh, yeah, everybody's full of the truth. All the liars are dead. Look at me. Well, go ahead and look at me, Mr. Regan. I know what you'd call beautiful. I ain't even pretty. I'm tall and gawky. No man would ever look at me twice. Well, Toby looked at me. He loved me, but... What are you going to do to him when you find him? Well, he's been threatening your father on the phone. I'm just going to take him there. Yeah, would you bring him to me first? Would you let me talk to him? Why? Because I... Maybe I, maybe I can hold him in my arms and make him forget all his hate and everything he's gone through. Maybe he'll still love me. We can go away together and get married. You know where he is. Can you find him tonight? Maybe. You gonna help me, mate? Hm. I gotta see a man. I guess I went kind of crazy tonight, huh? I don't know. I've been thinking about him so much lately. Yeah. Well, next time, give me a little thought, will you? Good night, lady. Well, Marty Anderson's office was a dirty room hanging over a shoe repair shop on Sunset near Alvarado. You could tell it belonged to him. The glass on the door hadn't been washed for ten years. He didn't answer when I knocked, so I tried my keys on the door. The third one worked. Inside, it smelled like a pile of wet gunny sacks. The only light was kind of a thick green from a neon sign going on and off outside the window. There was an old army cot in one corner, and right in front of the window, a big black roll-top desk and a cracked leather chair. He was sitting there looking at the neon light he couldn't see anymore. One dirty hand was on top of a scratch pad near the phone, and the other was inside his coat. When I pulled it out, it was covered with blood and the rest of a pint of cheap whiskey. I 
found a 38 cartridge case on the floor. He didn't have anything in his pockets except some keys and a plug of chewing tobacco. There wasn't anything in the desk drawers either. When I started to call homicide, I had to move his hand. The name Collier was written on the scratch pad, and there was an address to go with it. Police Department, 24. Extension 2521, please. Homicide, Chandler. Lieutenant Wendetti. Off tonight. Who's calling? All right, take this down, Sergeant. Shoe shop, Sunset, near Alvarado. Yeah? One flight up. Yeah? Office. Belongs to a private detective named Marty Anderson. Yeah? Got all that? Yeah. He's dead. What? Hey, who is... The Santa Monica fog was all over Flower Street on the 1300 block south. The streetlight didn't do much good. Just kind of hung around and watched everything get wet. I used a half a pack of matches finding my address. Out kind of late tonight, aren't you, Pilgrim? What'll it be? Toby Collier here? He was here. All right, I'll wait. He ain't gonna be here no more. You a friend of his? Never met the guy. Yeah. It's midnight, beat it. All right, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, like that, huh? Any way you want it. I'm gonna do you a favor. I'm gonna tell you something. All right, Santa Claus. Before I turn night watcher, they call me the candy kid. Six four, pound of two under three hundred. It'd be assault with a deadly weapon if I slapped you in the mush, but you're tempting me. Don't be All right, wait a minute. Being a night watcher ain't slowed me down, though. All right, now maybe this will. I just came from Marty Anderson's. So what? He's dead. So what, what? And in about a half an hour, the cops are going to be here looking for Toby Collier. Yeah? Well, they can just dig him up and talk all they want. Dig him up? Are you blind or drunk or something? This outfit buried him this afternoon. This is a mortuary. <laughs> Well, when I got home, she wasn't there, but a telegram was there. It was a long answer from San Quentin telling me how Collier had been brought to Los Angeles on a stretcher and the hospital that he was in, and a lot of other things. It took me 20 minutes to get out to Aladino, but I was too late. Well, her aim was a lot better this time. By the time I got through the door, the old man had dropped his gun and was kind of hanging onto a piece of drapery by the window. Got it. Got it. They'll get you for this. They'll get... Turned into a real Annie Oakley, haven't you? Good to see him like that. Real good. You want to give me that gun? It's empty. <laughs> sure, why not? He had it coming for a long time. You read my telegram? Yeah, I read it. And I phoned the hospital and they told me Toby was dead. Bad heart. <laughs> Wasn't that bad heart that killed Toby? It was him. He killed him. You don't have to make those faces. They don't make him any deader. You think I'm nuts, don't you? No, I'm not a lawyer, lady. You can plead any way you want. Well, I'll never tell it to a court. Don't bet on that. You aren't such a bad guy. I'll tell it to you. All of it? How many tramps you met in your life, Regan? Real tramps. Some. Some just thought they were tramps. Well, you met the genuine product today. Take him. For ten years, he's been packing away money. When the income tax people got close, he... He goes out and he finds Toby in a filling station. And makes him a junior partner. Yeah, works an embezzlement frame up that makes Toby the fall guy. That way he doesn't have to straighten out any books. Tramp number one. Genuine, huh? And then there's number two, a private dick named Marty Anderson. Pete. Oh, he's dead. Somebody shot him tonight. Yeah, he did it. The only decent thing he ever did in his life. Marty was in on it. He testified against Toby in court. But Marty wanted money. Yeah, all the time for the old man killed him. And it was supposed to look like Toby. Only Toby was dead. Yeah. Toby was dead and he... He couldn't kill anybody. When you find out about Toby, you come back and you do some shooting yourself, don't you? He killed Toby. At the morgue, they told me it was his heart. His heart, his soul... Everything that made him. He was on a hospital ward all the time. He was in prison. He only written and told me. All right. Come on. He's going to take me down. Yeah. Well, don't make no difference now. This Toby, you must have loved the guy. 
sit down and die before him. Yeah, lady, I guess you will. Well, that's the way it came out. Brondike killed Marty Anderson because Marty was trying to sell me what he knew about Collier's trial. Oh, Marty was a lousy private detective making those phone calls and trying to make Brondike think it was Collier. Well, the lion was mad because I phoned homicide and then ran away. He said it'd give the agency a bad name. And then he began talking the way he does. Funny thing about all this, Regan, those two going for each other. Yep. Yeah. She was nothing to look at. Him, he was a smart guy. He wound up in prison, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, but he was a smart guy. He was just framed. Not many smart guys get framed. What do you mean? I mean, Collier sold out to Brondike, and then he made the frame deal. Well, how do you know? Collier left the will. Mm. You think they'd have made a go of it? I mean, gotten married or something if all this hadn't happened? No. Nope. Why not? She went for him, and he went for her. Say, he didn't serve much time on a two to ten rap. He must have had a smart lawyer. No, you mean doctor. What? Huh? He had a heart condition. He was dying. And they paroled him? They let him out to die. Well, they do things like that? Sometimes. Hmm. No wonder he didn't write that dame. Yeah, what do you know about that? Nothing. You work on it. I'm tired. Good night. Are you a registered graduate nurse? Do you know someone who is? Then please listen carefully to this important message. 29,000 nurses are needed to join the new Army Nurse Corps Officers Reserve. For the first time in history, qualified nurses are given the opportunity of receiving a commission in the regular Army Reserve. These nurses will remain on inactive status, ready to serve their country in the event of an emergency. 4,000 of them, if they wish, may choose active duty. All nurses who receive reserve commissions will benefit from the opportunity for specialized training offered to them by the Army. Inactive reserve status will not interfere with the nurse's civilian life, but the educational opportunities offered her by the Army Medical Department will be of great advantage to her in her work. So don't wait. If you're a registered graduate nurse between the ages of 21 and 45, drop a card now for complete information to the Adjutant General, Washington, D.C. Jack Webb is starred as Jeff Regan with Wilms Herbert as Anthony J. Lyon. The role of Connie Brondike was played by Betty Lou Gerson. Jeff Regan is written by E. Jack Newman, produced by Sterling Tracy, with original music by Diggeron. It's CBS same time next week for more hard-boiled action and mystery with Jeff Regan, Investigator. If you like mystery, you'll be able to find out what makes a mystery when you find that clue with with mystery man Ken Crossan and other famous mystery experts on most of these CBS stations Monday night at 8.30. Remember, find that clue, CBS Monday night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.